That's why we're just saying, church, everything that we give God honor, glory, and praise for, we lift his name on high. We lift somebody's name on high. That's what's called exalting. If you exalt it, you lift it up. We lift up God's name because of everything that he did for us. Everything that he sent Jesus to do for us. Jesus came from heaven to earth to show us all the way to get back to God. He came down from heaven to earth. So if you could think of one of the best places to be in the world, some people it might be Hawaii. Because Hawaii is a real cool place, a real nice place. Just a beautiful place with the water and the oceans and the temperature on time. It's just a beautiful place. So you think Disneyland's a pretty cool place. Oh yeah, so you should be Disneyland. Think about coming from Disneyland, where it's all that fun and all the rides and everything, going to the desert. The desert where there's nothing. Think of coming from Disneyland, where it's all fun and it's all cool, and going to the desert to help somebody. That's what Jesus did. He went from heaven to earth to help us, to show us the way. And he went from the earth to the cross. And he was crucified, nailed to the cross. He went from the cross to the grave. That means he died. He gave his life for us. And he went from the grave to the sky. That means after three days, he rose again and went back to heaven to be with God. So we lift his name on high for that. We're going to talk a little bit about that today as we go through our scripture. In Luke chapter 10, verses 25, we're actually going to go past verse 29. Okay. This is the, what's known as the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I'm going to read through the verses again. Read all the way through. Bear with me. And then we're going to go back and talk about the things that we covered in this. And reading from the New King James Version, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, This is Jesus talking to the lawyer now. What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? And so he answered and said, This is the lawyer speaking back to Jesus. He says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto him, this is Jesus replying back to him, You have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered him and said, He gave this parable. He says, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and water, and he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, two coins, and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of this person, take care of him, and whatever you 
you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him, Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Amen. Here we have the account of, it actually starts with Jesus and a lawyer. And the lawyer is trying to test Jesus. Because this happened to Jesus quite often. Wherever he went to teach or preach, someone, either of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, or the scribes, someone was always trying to trip him up, trying to see if what he was teaching was true, trying to see if they could find fault in anything that Jesus taught or preached unto the people. So here we have a lawyer that comes to Jesus. A lawyer, an expert in the law, okay? He's going to stand up to Jesus and put Jesus now to the test. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he says, Jesus says, well, what's written in the law? You, you, you're a lawyer. You know, you know the law. You know what is, what is preached and taught. Uh, by the Pharisees, what is in the law? When he's saying the law, what he's referring to is the, the, the word of God that they had at the time. The first five books of the Bible, the written down prophets, that was all that they had. What is written in the law? What is, what is your reading of it? So he answered and said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And we know that from reading further on in the Bible that this is referred to as the greatest commandment to love God first with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and then love your neighbor as yourself as the second greatest commandment so Jesus answered him and says well you've answered right you do this and you'll live and when he says live he means have eternal life and when he says have eternal life, he just means spending eternity with God. He doesn't mean that the man is going to live forever in this body down here on earth because this body is going to pass away. He says live eternally. He's, he's meaning that we're going to spend after this body passes away by whatever means, then our soul will go spend eternity with God. That's living eternally. So Jesus tells her, do this and you will live. The man, wanting to justify himself, says, okay, all right, okay, okay. Got that part right. We got all that. But who is my neighbor? He asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Who do I have to love as myself? Certainly not everybody. Everybody can't be my neighbor. If you think of who is your neighbor, the old song on Sesame Street, who are the people in your neighborhood? <laughs> but that was an old song they used to sing out there. But who is your neighbor? Is, is, are your neighbors just the people that live in the houses on either side of you and across the street and in the same housing community? Or is your neighbor um, everybody in the city of North Las Vegas? Everybody in the, in, the, in, in the whole Las Vegas Valley, people in Pahrump, are they your neighbors? Every member, every, every any city in Nevada, is the whole city of Nevada your neighbor? United States, is the whole, are people in Rhode Island your neighbor? Well, the world, everybody in the world, is somebody sitting in China right now, is that your neighbor? Big neighborhood. If it is. So, who is my neighbor? That is his question to Jesus. Jesus, being who he was, do things the way that he did. Jesus now offers him a parable. Jesus says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, departed, and left him for dead. He says, now by chance, 
Let's not skip over that. A certain man came down, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. This man is just on a trip for a purpose. It doesn't say if he was a businessman. It doesn't say if he was just traveling casually. It doesn't say what it was. It just says a certain man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves, stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. So here he is. He's just walking along. He's standing for him. He's just walking along, and he's just jumped on by a group of thieves. Jumped on by a group of thieves, and they're pounding him, and they're beating him. They're ble he's bleeding. He's stripping. They stripped him of his clothes. They wounded him real bad. Pow, pow. They didn't say he had weapons or not, but they're putting a pretty good beating on this guy. Pee, plow, plow, and they laid him out <laughs> for dead. They departed him, and they left. Okay. They departed and they left. And it says a certain priest, now by chance, a certain priest came down the road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Come here. Jim, come here. Jim, Jim, okay. You walking along the road, you see him, and you pass by on the other side of the road. Like you don't see him. Wow. A priest. <laughs> the priest came along, saw him, and passed by on the other side of the road. Then it says, likewise, a Levite, <clears throat> when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. John. You're the Levite. You're walking down the road. You see him laying there. He's all beat down and everything. You pass by on the other side. Wow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so here's this man. He fell among thieves. They stripped him of his clothing. They wounded him. And he departed leaving him half dead. So they beat him pretty bad. The priest came by. The priest, you would think the priest would want to help. The priest came by and saw him laying there and passed by on the other side. The Levite, wow, the Levite as well? He arrived and he came to the place where they looked and he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was and saw him and had compassion. Our Samaritan, you're coming by and you see him and you have compassion on him that means <laughs> you feel for him that means that you see him where he is and you want to help him so you kneel down and you look at him and you see what's wrong with him and you can see that he's been beaten. You can see that he's been wounded. He's been stripped of his clothes and left here half dead. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to him and you're going to bandage his wounds. He's wounded all over the place. He's bleeding. They beat him up horribly. You're going to bandage his wounds. Wherever he's hurting, oh, they, you know, there's a bandage here. They, they busted his eye open. You got a bandage here. They cut it. And he busted his ribs. You're going to wrap him up all tight. Okay? They, he, he, uh, they busted him up. They were wounds. They help. He's going to help him up. Ah, oh, here you go. Way to go, Samaritan. Good job, man. And you're going you're to help him. Uh, help him. And he took him to an end. There you go. Brought him to an end. And he helped him. Because <laughs> like he bandaged his wounds, he poured on oil and water. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an end and took care of him. This is the Samaritan. The Samaritans were not highly esteemed people. They were looked down upon, as a matter of fact, by uh, 
are the children of Israel and other nations. The Samaritan, this Samaritan who was supposed to be looked down upon, who was an outcast, a social outcast, the Samaritan is the one who comes along and helps him. Comes along and has compassion, sees him and has compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds. He poured oil and water on him. He didn't have to go get him. He had those things with him as he traveled. He had oil and water. He made bandages. He bandaged his wounds. Then he set him up on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. He took him to a place where he could be safe now, where the, where the Samaritan could take, take care of him, got a room, and, and, and began taking care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, two coins, and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, he's telling the innkeeper, take care of him. And whatever you spend, beyond what I just gave you, whatever you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So he's telling the man, I have to go. I can't care for him any longer, but he still needs, because he was beaten half dead. They, they, they bruised him, they wounded him badly, they stripped him of all his clothes. So that, as though he, he needs time to heal. So the Samaritan saying now that I, I need you telling the innkeeper, here you go, you take care of this man. And if anything you spend in taking care of him, I will repay you myself when I come back. Because he travels that area. He, he goes back and forth in there doing his business. He says, and when I come again, I will repay you. And then Jesus asked, so which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Our neighbor is not just that person living in the house next to us. Our neighbors are not just those people who live next to us and across the street and in our own community. That's, that's not just our neighbor. Our neighbor isn't just everybody that lives in North Las Vegas or in the, 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 the Las Vegas Valley. Our neighbors aren't just the whole population of the state, 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 <laughs> state of Nevada. Our neighbors aren't just those people. Our neighbors aren't just the people in Rhode Island. Our, our neighbors aren't just the citizens of the United States. Our neighbors aren't just that person sitting over in China. Our neighbor is whomever we encounter. That is our neighbor. Everywhere we go, we have neighbors. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If our, if I, if, if our, our neighbor were simply limited to the person who dwell in close proximity to us, that relieves us of all responsibility for everybody that's outside of our housing community. Or if you get technical, anybody that doesn't live left, right, front, or behind us, that relieves us of all of our responsibility. But our neighbor is whomever we encounter. He said, Jesus gave this example and he asked the man, who do you think was, was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, the Samaritan. The Samaritan didn't even know the man who was laying on the side of the road, who'd been jumped upon, beaten, stripped of his clothes, wounded. He didn't know the man. He didn't look down and say, hey, that's Frank. Frank lives next to me. I gotta help Frank. No, he didn't say that. He looked upon the man and had compassion. Whenever we come across, that's on whom we should have compassion. It doesn't mean that if they only if they've been beaten, only if they've been jumped upon by thieves and robbed and stripped of their clothes, <clears throat> only if that person is down and lying on the side of the road where we happen to be traveling. Only if that's that's the only one that's our neighbor as we're walking along. Even though they don't live next to each other, 
even though they don't know each other's face, the only time that we need to be a neighbor is if we see somebody laying on the side of the road that's been beat up, damaged. But the, what this man represents is someone who had needs. He was beaten, he'd been robbed, so he had no assets, no resources, he had nothing, he had been robbed. He'd been taken of his clothing or his clothing had been taken from him. He was wounded and left, leaving him half dead. He had been deserted. Not only did they rob him, not only did they strip him of his clothes, not only did they beat him, but they deserted him and left him to die. So, as we come across people in our lives, our neighbor is the ones whom we encounter. Because we don't know what a person's needs are. Even though we might walk past a person in school, and we, I might walk past a person at work, you might walk past a person at CSN, or in the BX, or you might walk past a person in Walmart. Even though it doesn't look like they've been beaten up. It doesn't look like they've been stripped of their clothes. It doesn't look like they've been wounded. It doesn't look like they've been left by the side of the road. That person can still have a need that needs to be met. And as we encounter these people, people we meet, and we learn that they have needs, it's up to us to try to help them in whatever way we can. We can't help everybody. The, the, even, the, even the good Samaritan can only get the man so far. And he had to go. But he left instruction, he left resource that would allow the man to be helped back up until he got back on his feet. So he didn't just help the man that he found lying on the side of the road. He didn't just improve his condition. He changed, he changed the man's life because the man was left half dead. And the longer he stayed there, the closer to death he could have gotten. And had no one helped him, he would surely have died. But in saying all of this, it's important just to remember that our neighbor, who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Whoever we encounter, whoever we see that has a need, that is our neighbor. Whoever we see that's been beaten, whoever we see that's been abused, whoever we see that's been robbed, whoever we see that's been deserted and left in a bad condition, that's our neighbor. That's who we're required to help. And it's significant that it says, love thy neighbor as thyself. So who is my neighbor? Who do I have to love? You have to love your neighbor. You have to love that's how you demonstrate your love to your neighbor. Whatever they have need of, we help them find it. If we have it, we provide it. If we don't have it, we help them get to it. Love my neighbor as myself. Who is my neighbor? Your neighbor is whoever you come across. We don't want to be like the priest. We don't want to be like the Levite to know of somebody in need and we pass by on the other side. We don't want to be like those. We want to be like the Samaritan. Okay. Who stopped his journey to where he was going to help this man. the water and the oil that he had as he was traveling with him. Water and the oil that he had, he poured on this man's wounds. He bandaged the man's wounds. He took the man, after he poured the water and the oil on his wounds and he bandaged his wounds, he took the man and put the man on his animal, on his, his donkey. And he took the man to the end and took care of the man. But 
those who are around us that we have that, that, that have need that's who God wants us to help that's who our neighbor is whoever we encounter who has need that's our neighbor love our neighbor as ourselves when we say love your neighbor as ourselves we love our neighbors as ourselves if we were the ones laying on the side of the road we, we would want somebody to come help us we would want somebody to do exactly what that samaritan did for the certain man who was laying on the side of the road we would certainly want somebody to do that at the bare minimum we would want them to go get help today we would hope that they would call 911 hope the ambulance comes in a good time but we would hope that if a doctor would pass by that he would stop and help and use his skills to, to help us or if a policeman comes by and sees us laying there that he would use his skills and his authority to help us out we would hope that and if we would hope that somebody would do that for us, if we were in that position, then also, then we ought to also seek to do that for those that we see and that we know are in that position. Love my neighbor as myself. For as the Good Samaritan did, he made all his resources available to help the man. And even after he was gone, Told the innkeeper, whatever, he told the innkeeper to take care of it. And whatever, whatever you spend, I'll take it. I'll pay you back when I come back. The last verse, verse 37. Actually, 36 is 37. Now Jesus says, So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him, Jesus said, go and do likewise. Just as Jesus told the lawyer to go and do likewise, he's also telling us as we read this word, to go and do likewise. The Samaritan was traveling from one place to another. He wasn't, he didn't go, he didn't leave from Jerusalem on his way to Jericho saying, you know what, I'm going to find somebody laying by the side of the road. I'm going to help whoever I can help. Samaritan was on his way from Jericho, Jerusalem to Jericho. And he saw the man laying on the side of the road and he stopped and helped him. That's what he did. So even in our going out, in our, in our comings and our goings, as we go out, we're looking. We have a purpose for what we're doing. We also have our eyes open to anybody who might have it. To somebody who might have it. To somebody who's been beaten. To somebody who's been robbed, to somebody who's been stripped of their clothes, to somebody who's been left by the side of the road to die. That is who we have our eyes open for. Being aware of the situation, situational awareness of the military call and other people call it that as well. But in having that, doing the things that we go on go about doing throughout our day. And look, Give God some praise.